Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another weekly edition of our Real Estate Backstory. My name is Alan Richardson. I'm the managing broker here at Maximum Realtor and Realtor Partners. My name is Ming Richardson. I'm a compliance broker for Maximum One Realty and Realtor Partners. We do this every Monday, trying to kind of get your week started, all the comings and goings, the things happening in the real estate world, especially as it impacts us here in the Atlanta market. Uh, we want to kind of start off and talk about something that's kind of you know, a couple of things with, with the new NIR settlement that, that's coming out. There's a lot of buzz and a lot of education going on right now. So. There is. Yeah. And, and, and we've been teaching a ton of new contract, you know, kind of the contract changes. But, you know, one thing that's coming is the, the actual settlement doesn't actually hit until the 17th of the next month. But And there's all this talk going on. And you got to understand that, that just like, you know, we keep telling you, real estate's local. Real estate's local from the aspect of state-wise too, like all of our rules are very dependent on the state that you live in. And right now there, there's a, there's a new ruling in Colorado that says buyer contracts can't be required for home sellers. And at the same time, you have an AR lawsuit that says you have to have a buyer agreement beforehand. So do I know how that's going to play out in Colorado? No, I don't. But guess what? We're in Georgia. We already have buyer contracts. It's no big in deal Georgia, here. In Georgia, that's yeah. how we practice. That's how we practice. So, Full disclosure, and there's no innuendos. Yeah. So just understand that, that some states are really reeling with this because we've had buyer agency for forever. Yeah. You know, um, some of these states have not have not had buyer agency. Some mm -hmm. states forced sellers to pay the buyer's agent commission. Like in Georgia, we've been able to offer no commission. Not that it was wise, but you could. Um, no one was forced to. And, and so agents in these states Seller are freaking had out. Options. Yeah. So, whereas in the contract, a listing agreement, yep. or exclusive seller brokerage agreement, uh, in other states, there's no option for seller to check off and not co oping. Yeah. So, if you hear things like Colorado, Missouri, here and there, that really doesn't, doesn't apply. apply to us. It's just and, not us. Yeah. And unfortunately, because mm -hmm. what is being published out in the news, um, they don't say this as a, when they publish out, everybody think it's national news. Yeah. Uh, so therefore it's not really national. It depends on the state that you're in. Yeah. Now one place that we do want to, uh, you know, we, we talk primarily to, to fellow real estate professionals here. And, and that is if you ha currently have a listing right mm -hmm. now, um, and if, and if that listing is going to be going in past the 17th, you need to go ahead and have a conversation with your sellers. You don't have to go get new listing agreements signed, no. but you do need to have a conversation about, listen, the multiple listing service, we can't offer or we can't make offers of compensation Not through the MLS. the MLS. But we can definitely do that in our personal publication, advertising, list report, wherever you want, website. Yeah. Uh, and 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 that, but all I'm saying is is that's a conversation that we need to be ready to have. A lot of folks are just like not prepared for this thing to happen, and and all of a sudden it's just not going to be shared there. So you as a listing agent, how are you going to share these? Have you had these conversations with your sellers? You still got a few weeks, roughly three weeks, to get ready before this thing kicks off. Uh, and you know, the MLS is going to show some offers of compensation, I believe. Um, but FMLS not commission. Is, yeah. FMLS is going to change your word to compensation. Yep. So it's MLS, if not a concession, yep. uh, depending on what it is. So just make sure you have a conversation with the agent. If not, use a mm -hmm. special step that is written for our bro uh, for the buyer brokerage Yeah, and the client. Unlicensed assistance, what can they do? So Greg really, you know, Greg sent out a reminder to all the brokers saying, Look, make sure that your un, your agents, unlicensed assistants are doing right. And the very first thing that they kind of reminded us and we want to remind you for is that a written agreement must exist between the licensees and their unlicensed assistants. That has to be shared with their broker. The broker has to have a copy of that. Uh, it, it's important that, that, that the broker knows and, and approves of who your unlicensed assistant is. Now, we have a lot of folks that, that, uh, don't really understand what an unlicensed assistant can and can't do. And so we just kind of want, want to run down through a list here with you. Uh, so an unlicensed assistant can answer calls and take messages, but they can't give any real estate advice. They can't answer a single question, right? Correct. Uh, they can't make appointments for the licensee. I'm, I'm sorry. They can make appointments for the licensee. They can schedule an open house, but they cannot hold it. Right. 
Yeah, exactly. They can schedule appointments, uh, inspectors, those kind of things. They can prepare advertisements uh, and marketing pieces, but it has to be under the direction of the agent as well as their broker. Um, they can submit data under um, overview of the agent, you know, as Once far as- it's been you know, provided. Yep. So the data has come from the licensee or the broker. Yep. So uh, they can they can ha like hand deliver documents. They they can uh, you know deliver things, install signs. Uh, you know th they can do a lot of things like that. Uh, they could accompany someone to an open house, but they couldn't go do it themselves, Correct. right? Correct. So they can help you set up and break down, or just be there as a second person. But they cannot answer any real estate questions yeah. when they're being approached by a potential buyer. Yeah. But now the list of what they can't do, this is where we see violations here a lot of times because uh, unlicensed assistant cannot prospect for clients make, by making cold calls for listings and things like okay. that. They can't call out the clients and, and, and now they can, you know, they can in, in, in the course of, of normal marketing. If, so, if someone says, ask them something, they can, they can forward that to you. They can answer in, inquiries and then forward it to, to the agent, but they cannot give any real estate advice. They can't. And, and so they can't solicit expired listings for sale by owners. They can't right. do any of these phone calls for those kind of stuff. Um, they can't show real estate. They can't hold open houses, you know. Uh, they can't discuss the contracts and, 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 and they cannot negotiate on behalf of licensee. Yeah. They can't give advice to clients and they can't act like they're licensed. So they, 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 they you know, a lot of times some mm -hmm. we've seen where, where unlicensed assistants sometimes will be like, well, this is how it is. No, it isn't because you're not a licensee. So you can't speak that way. So, you know, before hiring an, an uh, you know, an unlicensed assistant or in, make sure you, know. you understand what they can and cannot do, because if they answer a question reference to real estate transaction and they're unlicensed, it can come back to the licensee and their broker. Yep. So it, there is a huge because the public is assuming that because they are a group with you that whatever their answer is, is from the licensee yep. when in actuality it's not. So um, next one, I want to kind of jump into, into like some real world stuff. So I, I recently just got a phone call from an agent from mm -hmm. another brokerage and she wanted to accuse us of not presenting her offer. So she wanted to accuse our agent that, you know what? I saw that this listing closed and our offer was worth more. We, we submitted a higher oh, yeah. offer. And, and, you know, uh, I'm going to report you to Greg and I'm going to report you to the code of ethics and all this other kind of jazz. And I need to get the name of your client. Okay. <laughs> so first of all, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, the phone number, the contact information, because I'm going to let them know what, it, what, what terrible people you are kind of thing. And first of all, uh, I want to say this as kindly as possible. Go kick sand. OK, because you don't have the right to talk to my client and what my the, the offer that my client chooses to accept has nothing to do with you. Right. Because a lot of times listing agents or I'm sorry, buyers agents think that all it is is just this initial offer price. It's and, not. and so we want to share with you because I'm a little bit fired up. I guess you can kind of tell. Obviously, the phone conversation uh, is very fresh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and so. We, well, for example, we want to. I'm going to share this with you. This this is a recent offer, or this, you know, so we had a listing and we got five offers in on the property. And so here's the very first thing: is when when you take that offer, and, and if you're going to present these five offers to your clients, well, if, if you went and presented these five offers to your clients, you would obviously obviously say, well, gosh, buyer three is the best offer, right? They, it's got Based the highest price. highest price, right? And so you as a you as a buyer's agent like 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 we're going to win. It's totally it. But see that's not that's not how this it's game really works. Package. Right? So like like one thing that Ming has taught me over the years and she's so amazing of this is how we present our offers to our sellers, right? We go over the, the initial offer price, closing cost, due diligence, closing date, earnest money, financing type, contingencies. Who's the lender? Is there down payment assistant? Any other things going on? And then at the end of the day, what's our highest net to seller? Because if you look in the beginning, the highest net to seller was well, uh, offer number three. Well, offer number, number three. three. But what's the highest net to seller now? When, I mean, I mean that may have been the highest 
offer, but the highest net to seller is offer number four. Right. But, you know, sometimes seller may have situation where they want quicker closing. They want a less risk. Uh, they want a, a solid buyer and they may choose whatever they feel like best suit them. Right. So therefore, sometimes not always about the price. It's sometimes about the condition terms of the uh, the contract itself and not always the bottom line. Right. Because what we want you to see is that, you know what, what's the best offer now if seller A has a ton of stuff? and needs 60, 60 days. days to close. What's the best offer? Well, gosh, buyer three may be the best offer for that one because they have a closing date 60 days out. It, the next sell, you know, another sale you have has just been transferred. They have to leave in two weeks. Otherwise they're leaving their wife and kids behind. So this one needs a really fast close. Well, What's the be best buyer deal? number five. Right, exactly. If, if seller C just wants the, the highest net to seller. Buyer number four. There you go. Seller D, their husband passed away. They don't want to make any repairs. That, that you know, that, that, that she just can't handle that. Buyer number five. Well, no, no due diligence is going to be the one right there because because if they, if we have no zero days of due diligence, that that might be the the best offer because for them to take. Up yeah, four or five. Yeah, and then you know the last one here. What if the seller wants to do a thirty day temporary occupancy? Well, that may not be listed in there, but those are the kind of things that, that, that get negotiated out. So as a buyer's agent, I understand that it gets frustrating to lose deals. I do, but you don't know the entire picture. And me as a listing agent or us as listing agents, uh, you know, like, like, don't take this wrong. We're not under no obligation, nor are we required or should we disclose personal information of our clients. So, and sometimes buyer's agent, what you need to do is yeah. have a frank conversation with the, the selling broker or the agent to see what is seller's motivation. Now you have five offers. Now I know I'm competing with other people. So yeah. tell me what I need to do to make seller happy. And I can go back to my buyer to see whether or not this will make my buyer happy. As a buyer's agent, you need to advocate for your clients. But I can't tell you how many offers we, we see come in on properties. And all it is is offer submitted acknowledge there's no phone calls there, there, there there's no opportunity really to try and engage with that other agent to hey what's important to your seller this is what's really important to my buyer my, my folks not, really love this home not every seller agent will do it they will won't. respond or are in position to answer those questions okay so don't take that offensively when you have no response yeah so I guess what I'm saying is, is it's not just about price. This is important for our sellers as well as for our buyers mm -hmm. to understand. And for buyers agents, please, if you if you think that just the, the and I've been on the other side, right? Oh yeah. We, we we've seen where where we thought. I don't and know, our buyers. I, I don't know. I don't. Us. I don't know if they they submitted it. I don't know if they really did do that. Did you know? Did they get and, an offer that was better for the agent and not better for the for the seller? You just don't know. But you have to go off. We're dealing with other real estate professionals. They have a contractual obligation with their clients. And their fiduciary duty is to their client. And and just remember, if you have a great buyer consultation up front, this will alleviate some of the pain points. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, steal this from Ming, because this is how she does multiple offers and, and it, it, it does such a good job. So all right, interest rates. Unfortunately it's gone up. Actually they're flat, really. I mean like I mean like 0 0.03 okay so um uh, over under last year 0 0.01 up from last week however it's looking better we, we are really looking better matter of fact this is how we compare out compared to the historical norms like like the red line here represents what has been historical norm and actually we just we did hit it and and and, and we're actually under the historical norm right now uh matter of fact uh, Redfin's, you know, their their economic research lead. He just basically said, "Look, we feel like the Fed is gonna is gonna be okay. cutting rates, um, and and they're they're already starting to price in some of those things. So there may be some drops. However, now is the right time to buy, not wait. Right, the the rising inventory as well as as where interest rates are right now. Now's the time because if you wait for interest rates to drop." What happens to prices? 
prices are going to go up again, right? Well, if not, it will encourage yeah. a multiple offers and you're competing with everybody else that has been waiting for a while. And so, yeah, but the National Association of Realtors just released this. It, it's a, it's a, it, it breaks down by race, but it's it, they what they broke out was how many what percentage of renter households can afford to buy the typical home. So here in Georgia, almost 30 percent of renters can afford to buy a typical home. So, you know, every three houses that you every three rental properties, one of those almost yes, yes, of can course. afford to buy. How about for our Hispanic renters? 21% of our Hispanic renters uh, can afford to buy the average priced home. Uh, African Americans, it's almost it's right at 20, 18 to 20%. And Asians, it's actually almost 40% of Asian households can aff- that, that currently rent. So we have to understand that there is, there is a, there's a lot of pent up demand out here. Uh, and and we really think that the rental households are the place to really focus a lot of energy Absolutely. right now. It's a really, really good place because that's where wealth creation really does come from. So uh, the Lance Lambert house, they released this price tracker information. And I found this very interesting because just like we were talking about before, real estate is super very local. local. Yeah. And overall, since you know since covid we've seen statewide around a 54 percent property value appreciation but if you look at like it breaks down by the county like the farther you get away from atlanta the higher your appreciation rate is and so what this is is by county shift in in county level home prices since march of 2020 since basically pre-covid and so you can see that Fulton and DeKalb, 39%, 44%. But once you start moving outside of that, Especially it's a little bit low, too. Especially County, which is south of us. Well, but look at Clayton County. Clayton mm-hmm. County is up 70%. And so if you're, if you're representing clients in these areas, it's just good to kind of know. And so we wanted to share this data with you just so you'd have a chance. Look up the counties where you operate in just so you can understand what, what sort of appreciation. Uh, we're hearing still, like, like where did all the $200,000 houses go? Well, with 50% appreciation, all those $200,000 houses are now 300000 right? At least. Yep. So we are seeing a lot of stale inventory. Stale inventory is posting its biggest increase, all right? And so it, it's looking like, like we're seeing a lot of listings sit on the market right now. And this is important for, like, like this is so very this is timely where, information that, the, that we need to be aware of. The selling, a, selling agent needs to price the property correctly if mm-hmm. you don't. Then, if the seller is able to afford to sit some time in the market, then that's okay. But I understand at the end of the day, it's always about pricing. Yeah. But, you know, the share of homes sitting for two plus months is ticking up. up. Right now, the share of unsold listings sitting on the market for at least 30 days in the Atlanta area is 63%. That's, that's a huge. that's a really significant number, and at the same time, what's that leading to? We are having more price reductions, and uh, on on for this time of year, the highest on record. For this month, mm-hmm. we have more price reductions than we've had ever had during this month, and so it really is kind of it, it's very dependent uh, on that inventory that's sitting out there. Those sellers who are saying, "Well, gosh, it's it's you know." Um, my, my house is still worth it, that kind of stuff. Look, the, the folks who are going out there and, and pricing their property unrealistically, they're sitting on the market until the point where they have to do price reductions and they're having to take such drastic price mm-hmm. reductions, it's hurting them. Because the next slide I really wanna show you is one that, that, that like, like, this is the one that hurts these folks, is that almost 40% of, of pending listing. sales yeah. are under contract in two weeks. So on one hand, we've got this massive group of, of properties getting old, aging, starting to take really significant price reductions. And then we've got 40% of our sales that are under contract in two, two weeks. weeks. So we've got these, th- th- this group over here that is pricing their property and you know price, condition, location, it's priced right, and they're moving quickly. And then over here, the folks who are like, you know what, let's try it here. And they're just sitting there. They're, 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 they're growing moss, right? They're just not going anywhere. And we have to be honest with our clients about that because that's what's really going on. Uh, the, the, the other kicker here is 31% of homes are being sold above list price. 
Those so, are the ones that are listing it at the right price. Right. And so like, like if you're, if you're trying to go out there and you're trying to shoot the moon to the top of the market, what we're seeing is, is that your properties are going to sit there. If your price just right where you need to be, even a little bit slightly under the market's moving that price up the, 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 the good price properties they're selling quickly. So the idea that I'm going to get more by sitting on the market is an, is it, that's the exact opposite. The properties that are going out there are sitting there and sitting there and sitting there and they're going to have to take price reductions. And then we're having to take other concessions that's going on. It's really, really painful. And I know it's a, it's a tough dis discussion to have with your sellers. I, I it is. totally get and, it. And sometimes, you know, time will tell the old phrase. And so, you know, sometimes for some seller understand Time will tell. Yeah. And you just have to be be able to provide them with factual data so they don't think that you are not doing your job. Yeah. Now, the the one segment that's hitting that's starting to see this worse than any right now is the luxury, luxury listings. Homes. Luxury listings, the overall inventory is up eleven percent over non luxury, right? So we're seeing a, a rise in inventory for, for all properties. But the rise in inventory for luxury and high-end homes is even greater. And so, you know, the, these numbers are jumping more and more and more. And so, again, we, we just see these kind of things coming. It's going to be about affordability. Absolutely. Uh, and, and that's just one of the big pushes kind of going on out there. A uh, couple of things we want to prepare you guys for what's coming up. Trade so show. so uh, Thursday, September 5th. Uh, Metro South Association Realtors is having their real estate trade show and expo that's at the Hood Street Gallery uh, over nice in, in, in McDonough. Uh, also coming up August 27th, 28th, 29th, we have the Tom Ferry Summit that's going to be happening in all of our offices live. Please, please come in for that. Uh, you can go to max1.rock slash Tom Ferry. You can sign up for any and all the days. You get six hours of CE credit per we're, day. Yeah, we're gonna and you do you. have to attend the whole. Yeah, day. there's no half credit there. It's either, no you're either there credit. or you're not, right? right. So, um, but then you get breakfast, lunch taken care of every day. We we treat it just like if you had actually flown out to Dallas, uh, got a hotel room, went to the conference, sat we at a fun. table. We have a really really good time. So um, please. If you haven't joined us before, we're going on like, I don't know, eight, nine, 10 years. And we've been doing it's it forever. Kind year, of thing. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's been a long time we've been doing it. Yep. And it's always a really positive experience. It will help like, like take some time to invest in yeah. your business. And also hopefully by joining this event that it will change some of your mindset and allow you to look at it from a different point of view. Yeah. Now this week. So uh, as far as like like training, education going on. So this week we have our, our relaunch. So it's a 25 hour post license class. It's starting in McDonough on Monday. It runs Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for two weeks. So you can also come in for those same classes. So on Monday, we're doing lead generation in, in, in today's market. Tuesday over in the airport, airport office, we have 1031 exchanges. So if you work with investors or, right, looking, a good at, one. or looking at investing yourself, you may want to attend this class. Yeah. Wednesday is going to be marketing and technology secrets. Again, that's going to be in the McDonald office. And then Friday is business planning in the, here in the McDonald office as well. So we hope you guys have a great week. If we can be of any kind of service, please call, text, smoke signals. We don't care. Have a great day. Yeah. Try that again. Happy Have Monday. a great week and a happy Monday. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.